If you've been following my Instagram page, you will know what I'm working on at the minute. I'm working on a time-lapse video showcasing all the heritage sites and everything about the County Loud area. I already released a book, Loud Rediscovered about it, but now I want to do a time-lapse. This is what got me into photography in the first place. I did a time-lapse of Dundalk with a GoPro. You can check it out here. And now I want to revisit this whole thing, but now do it about the whole county. So you're going to get Dundalk, you're going to get Drogheda, Carlingford, Ardy, the whole Cooley Peninsula and everything else around the Loud area and I've been documenting parts of it as well with behind the scenes of me shooting these time lapses and talking about the gear I'm using, how I'm using it, the intervals I'm using and, and everything that I'm doing with these time lapses and I was going to head out and shoot today but the weather's been all over the place and then as well as that there was perfect conditions earlier on at about four o'clock and then I realised it's bank holiday, all the shops closed. So that wouldn't do well for uh, you know a mid of the town time lapse with the traffic and all the shops closed so now I have to hope that that will actually be okay for tomorrow so I've decided to come and edit the videos I had no intros now I have an intro so what you're going to see right now are all the behind the scenes of some of the time lapses I've shot over the last month enjoy okay I, can, I hope you can hear me over the the seagulls but up early in the morning in Black Rock doing a time lapse so this is one of the time lapses off the uh, the cockle pickers right behind me. Uh, they've got the camera set up just using very minimal setup really. Using the A7 III of course, the 24 to 105 kit lens and the new HY filter system, the magnetic system. I have the intervals set to every 10 seconds on aperture priority at uh, F11, set it to ISO 100 with a reverse grad at the front just to keep the exposure down and control for when the sun appears. So that's what I'm trying to aim for here, is when the sun appears, that's when the trouble starts. The dynamic range, because you can't bracket a time lapse, so you have to do as much as you can in camera. Okay, the moment of truth has come, and I did everything right except for one thing. I didn't get the alignment right. I did not get the alignment right. I wanted to have the cockle pickers and the sun to the left, but then when I got here, I could see clouds illuminating, and I just figured that's where, it's very hard to judge because this place isn't directly east, it's a little bit off east, so it's very hard with photo pills for it to see where your alignment's gonna be. So I so I set the camera off angle to the cockle pickers to bring the sun into the scene, but if I stand just here, where I should have been standing, I have the sun right in the scene on the left side of it. Oh well. Okay, so the sun is up, it's very bright now already, and yeah, the reverse grad has worked a treat. It's controlling the scene. Uh, I'm still gonna have enough information in the shadows to regain the details of the statues because they're really nice. They're really nice statues, and just to have them silhouetted is a bit of a is a bit of a loss. Uh, as well as that, the 10 second timer is working great because it's counteracting all the cars going past because you don't want because of how low I have it. Any car going past is just gonna cover the scene, which you don't want at all. But it was all about composition, so it's, it's, in that case it was about getting the right interval to suit your needs. Also one great thing about photographing on the main street is my camera's just over my shoulder and my van's just over my shoulder, it's right beside it so if I get too cold for the time lapse I can just sit in, listen to some tunes and just chillax or in this case stay out in the cold and record a vlog. One thing I've noticed from doing these time lapses is how irritating it is and it happens so frequently that people will walk right in front of the camera to come talk to you and you're like uh, you know, like if it was photography, it doesn't matter because you can just wait. You can either get their attention to come to the back of the camera and then take the snap, or you can just ask them to move out of the way for a second so you can take the snap. But with time lapses, they've usually ruined it because they're usually standing there for a minute or two before you buck up the courage to go. I'm actually taking a time lapse. Can you can you scoot on? And they've ruined it because you're going to have to disregard all of those and you're going to have a big massive leap in your time lapse, which is just real amateur and jerky. I had a guy actually stop his car right in front of me while I was still shooting the cockle pickers to talk about the moon that was setting, that set earlier this morning. And I'm like, oh my God, like seriously, you stopped your car right in front of the camera. What do you, like, you just have to be polite. You just have to be polite.
so the time lapses are continuing on and I'm photographing the Pro League wedge tomb, not the Pro League diamond, I've actually already done that and I've posted it onto my Instagram. But while I was there, I took up too much time. Oh, the sun is coming out, loving it, yes! I was wondering with the clouds. I'll show you now, I'll show you now what I'm shooting. Here is the behind the scenes. So that's a 50mm Sigma on the A7 III. Another A7 III, Tamron 17 28, with a YC Onion motorized slider, <laughs> and two uh, Vanguard tripods. And there's the sun just coming out there, you can see. There is the wedge tomb, pretty cool all around. Okay, I've got a bit of time. I'll show you the scene quickly, quickly, quickly. And that's the scene. It's gonna take half an hour to run its course. Going from low up to high. And yeah, so when I came up here and I did the Pro League Dolmen, the sun was shining straight down here across this wedge tomb. But because I wanted a dolmen, it was my priority. I used up all of the lights and then trying to set that up with one tripod was too difficult so I had to come back again so I'm now back with two tripods and it's 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 gonna be really good it's gonna be really really good um I can't wait just to get all this stuff all the ideas I have in my head I like my wife has just been saying to me like you are so distracted because every spare moment I have at the minute is just thinking towards you know should I go and book the Crown Plaza, try and get a, you know, a time lapse this time in the hotel because they weren't up for it the last time. They didn't understand what a time lapse was. Don't forget in 2016, not many people knew what time lapses were. In, you know, they'd seen it in house cars but never really knew. If you said time lapse, they didn't know the name of it until like I put up my video and a couple of other people put out their videos. 2016, 2018, um, that time period, time lapses, hyper lapses became quite popular because you could do them on the phone then as well. So now this time around, a lot more people are aware of what they are. So I'm just looking because the sun is now going in behind that bank of clouds again. Completely clear skies all day today. All day. I, I can't stress enough. All day till five minutes before I was ready to go. I just had, I got changed into my, my clues and uh, cause it's, it's deceptively warm at the minute, middle of March. And uh, yeah, got into the van and I'm like, oh, loads of clouds. But the only thing is for time lapses, you don't mind that, I just would have liked a little bit more sun to come into the area here and light up those stones, but make it work no matter what anyway. I should say too that this is the first video clip that I'm doing with my new ZV-E10. Now, if you're watching my channel, I would have already done a review by the time this comes out, but this is the first piece of footage that I'm doing with it, and I like it. I don't know now if my opinions will change when I'm doing the review, but so far, initially, really, really happy with it. Very impressed with the size of it and the whole, you know, oh, APS-C versus full frame. Well, this thing is a powerful, tiny little unit. So you know what? There's no one here, so I'm gonna leave this stuff right there. I'm gonna leave it right there, and let's go down to the Pro League Dolmen because, like I said, it's only down the way, and I love it, I love it, I love it. It's, it's one of my favorite places to visit. Um, it's just a, like it's huge, it's huge. It's a bit eight foot, the gap I think in between the bottom stones, I think the stones stand seven foot, maybe eight foot. And then the capstone, I don't know how big the capstone is, but it weighs about 40 ton apparently. It's one of the biggest uh, dolmens in the country and, and it's one of the least known. Everyone knows the one in Clare, which I can't remember the name of, um, just, just checking to make sure no one's there trying to rub my gear. <laughs> It'd be quicker lifting the bag than it would with the rest of the equipment. They'll probably drop it and break it. Uh, but yeah. And the reason why I want to bring you to show you this is because loads of people don't realize this. Is not only do you have this 3,000 year old dolmen, but it's in a golf course. So here is the dolmen. And if you stand about here, there's actually a child's toy in it there. That's possibly my favorite angle. And if you look just over to the right, you will see hole number five of the Ballymascanlin House Hotel Golf Course. So there you go. A bit of history while playing golf. And just to show you the size of this. There you go. I'm five foot eight. Oh, it's a bit tight in here, but I'm five foot eight. Look at the, look at the, look at the space. Huh? I can't even touch it. There you go. 
on my toes. On my toes. Massive. Absolutely massive. Whatever this was for. Who knows? Who really knows? Or is it just art, really? Like, you know what I mean? Is it, like, I don't know. Do you believe the history? How can we prove it? But nonetheless, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I think you saw me kind of peeking over. I was like, my head was cocked over trying to see the, the, the screen to see if I had the, the dolmen in. I was like, oh, can you see it? And then realized, I think I'm actually in the frame. Noob, absolute noob. Absolutely safe as houses. Uh, you don't ever see golfers around here and it's too late in the day for them to be playing there at this stage. Um, so just to let anyone know as well, for those wondering, you can see straight off the bat with the settings. I'm using aperture priority. It's the best thing to do with the, with the light conditions changing. Though I think the exposure hasn't changed that much. 1640, it might have been 1800 when I started it. Um, what's this one at? That's at a sixth of a second now. What's this one at? This one is at a sixth of a second, and I think that started at 1 15th, so not much variation in the lighting. Probably could have left it uh, as is. Top tip for anyone looking to start doing their own time lapses, vlog it, because it kills loads and loads of time. It really does. It kills loads of time. It's, it's ridiculous. Like, this was a half hour long time lapse that I'm shooting, and uh, most of it is already done. I have I've shot most of it at this stage. <laughs> it's so good, so so good. Also, the motorized slider works off the mobile app, so once you hit once you hit go, it'll go until it stops. So you don't need to check it on your phone anymore. It'll just keep going until the end. So I found anyway, at least anyway. I, like I wouldn't mind it. That YC Onion app has crashed on me more times than not, especially when using a gimbal because you can use a the Zayun or Zhun. Weeble S with it, uh, and it crashes all the time with me. But when it comes to the time lapses, you set it; it goes back to the starting spot, and once it once it goes, yeah, it's really really good. So it's handy; they can just throw it in your pocket and uh, sit back and chill, bring some music with you. Okay, that's almost done. The camera, as you can see over there, is almost at the very very top of the slider. So what I'm going to do now is I don't need to be recording anymore for time lapse. It's not going to make any difference. So I'm going to stop the behind the scenes photo. I'm going to mount this camera onto that tripod and you're going to get to see how I shoot my behind the scenes that I've become quite known for on Instagram. I've never shown it, only a few people have ever actually seen me doing it because I'm going to be honest with you, you look like a tit. I look like an Egypt right now. I have three tripods and three cameras and a big ass bag photographing and videoing rocks that are in some cool looking formation. Explain that when you, yeah, explain that to someone who doesn't know. Okay, so the best settings I can tell you when you're doing your own behind the scenes is get a nice fast lens. I'm using the Sigma 50mm f1.4 and I'm going to be shooting at f1.4 all of this. Even the behind the scenes time lapse I did was shot at f1.4. I do have a Tamron 70-180 to 180 f2.8 and I also do have my Sony 135mm f1.8. Now that is at home but I do bring that out on shoots and if I want a lot of bokeh I'm going to take that lens out. But for majority of my shots that you see it's usually shot on this Sigma 50mm f1.4. And where I used to focus on matching the orientation of the camera, so if you're shooting in landscape, you shoot your behind the scenes and that, for doing the carousel in Instagram, I'm kind of not doing that as much. I'm kind of mixing it up and see which, which suits best. And then I always be considering that if um, Vanguard wanted for the tripods or H&Y wanted for the filters, that I appropriately compose the image to suit that there's going to be text added into it. Everyone always center aligns it. You take photo of a camera you put it right in the middle of the image that's not going to suit companies who are going to want to use it for marketing if it is a case that you're going to license it out to them or give it to them in exchange for gear whatever you do whatever you agree to do that's that's your business so i'm just going to take a few snaps before uh, that little battery on that little camera dies <laughs> so i'll get talking to you in a minute do well to put the autofocus on, had it set off from the time lapse. Now when you're doing this as well, make sure to take note of what all is blurred out and what is in focus because you may have to change your aperture 
a bit deeper so you can get more in focus and use leading lines to the best of your abilities. If you use a lot of leading lines and a, and a great load of beautiful bokeh, you know, the right amount of bokeh, it's going to make your behind the scenes photos absolutely sing. And make sure when you post them on Instagram that you tag the feature pages, all the camera pages, because they're going to share it and you're going to get more attention for it. So an obvious leading line is to go up the slider from here all the way up. But yeah, not all compositions work. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> that looks like uh, looks like dog shit. When I was at the Pro League Diamond, I got a really good one. I think the last one I need to do is switch to the 70 to 180, shoot at 180 at F2.8, and move all the way back there, as far back as I can, so I can get the two tripods, the slide or the camera, all in shot. And then actually, and then use the F2.8 to blur the background a good bit more. So um, I think that's going to be the shot. I don't, I'm not really overly happy with the shot with this here. It's just because there's so much in it. You're losing a lot. Do you mind? <laughs> Choir rehearsals. Is it looking good for Sunday, lads? <laughs> Okay, I've had to come out the turnstiles to get this photo done. So this is the other entrance into the golf course that only locals really know about. Everyone else will come from the hotel, but I'm actually just parked out there because it's it's easier than walking the seven minutes up from the uh, the hotel. Even for how far I am away from the gear, I'm still only shooting at 135 mil. I can't even get to the 180 uh, fences and stuff are getting in the way of that. Like so. Um, but yeah, it's, this is a little bit of an extreme, but sometimes you know it could really work well in your favour. Uh, if I had had the 135mm lens with me, I would have been using it at f1.8, but I use it at f2.8 for this. How about a TikTok favourite? What you see versus what I see? I'll show you straight out. Oh yeah. And that can be the difference. About 12 meters. <laughs> One thing I am conscious of when I'm shooting is the Instagram crap because it ruins all compositions. So trying to imagine where the four to five ratio is, is just, it's an extra bit to the top and an extra bit to the bottom. You know, I just wish to do away with the four to five. It makes no sense. Facebook give full, Twitter still gives full, even though on the feed it displays it in four to five, but when you click into it, you can you can see the full two to three. It's 35 mil, lads. People haven't shot four to five since they had medium format. Right, now recording with the small rig selfie stick like <laughs> professional photographer i earn a living from photography and i'm carrying a selfie stick and whoa don't fall don't fall okay i'm carrying two tripods on my back this big tripod here shouldn't really be on the bag but it saves me carrying out of a spare hand anyway so especially for getting into this gate now it's a pedestrian gate but um yeah so coming to roach castle Another favourite spot of mine for time lapse. I'm hoping there's no cattle in the field. I heard some rustling. Hoping there's no cattle in the field. And there's a sign right there as well. Danger falling masonry all. Oh, jeez. Right, okay, well, we'll see what the crack is when we get in here. The best part about this gate is the pedestrian side of it. Yeah, 
just close it up and that's it gone. Right. Now, there was a time I came here before and you can't see. So you can't see anything past this rock. And that tripod's still gonna fall in a second. You can't see anything past this rock, so if it's cutting in the field, you won't know until you get around the corner. And it happened to me before. There was about 30 or 40 cattle. Uh, I don't get into fields. Whoop. Nearly lost me toe. I don't get into fields with cattle because they're too unpredictable. Sorry to say. Gentle giants, but if they, stand, if they take a turn, you have no standing against them. And if there's calves and a cow, she'll stamp you to death to protect the calf. So, doesn't seem to be out in here. This is class. Hopefully I'm not too late for a good decent time lapse. Maybe I'll only get one camera angle. The sun looks pretty low here. Uh, got here a bit later than they should have. Should have been here about maybe half an hour ago, but the clouds didn't really look like they were gonna do anything. And then suddenly they did and I had to move quickly, but let me introduce you to one of my favorite castles, Roach Castle. To say this place is underrated is an understatement. A lot of unders there, but I just noticed you can't even see the sun at all. It's right behind the castle, so what time are we now? Watch, it's 25 past, so the sun doesn't set for another half an hour, but it's okay. I'll just keep on walking around this side of the embankment, and uh, I get the sun setting beside it, so it'll be grand. Oh, what oh, came true? I know, I know, I know. Uh, I get so easily distracted, but... Well, that's gonna work out nicely anyway. That'll work out nicely. Maybe if I stand here... Yeah, if I stand here, start the time lapse, and then let the sun reveal itself. That means I can... Because there's a big hill, there's a big massive hill to the side of this. And I always like to show it of the castle. There's the big hill. We walk over then. The sun's gonna peek out like that. So, gonna get set up. Ready to go. Absolutely nobody else here. Got this place to my staff as well. Deadly. Right, I have it all set up. Um, I'm using the HMY filters again. I'm only using the grad filter just to control the lighting as much as I can because this is such a dark place because there's no, it, it's backlit and there's no, like, it's open hills for miles, so nothing actually lights or illuminates the castle. Now I have the camera set on aperture priority for these time lapses where the, the light changes because uh, the sun is actually, oh no, it's about to pick it around the corner. Um, I have it set to the just just a zero exposure, none above, not below, right in the center. Uh, the grad filter should darken enough around the castle that I should still get some details when I raise the shadows in post. Trying to get this all done in camera is so difficult because it literally is a guessing game. It could be good. I thought it was going to be nice. A lot of the clouds have disappeared now, so. And there's also, there's a set of teenagers running around here. I can hear them shouting. So I'm hoping that they don't run in front of the castle, because that'll just, oh no, they're way down on the road now. They were literally at the castle there a second ago, uh, giving out to each other. And I was just like, please don't stand, because this happened to me already. I did a time lapse already down in the main street of Black Rock uh, for the sundial, and I forgot how busy it is, and people just walked in and out. I even tried to allow for the interval time to exclude them, so I had it set to 10 seconds to try and exclude people from walking in and out of the shot, where really I should have just embraced it and just set a long exposure and had them just ghostly, just you know, go past and show that it is a busy scene, but I will return back there and shoot it, but the, uh, the sun, wow, the sun is gorgeous here. So the sun is just peeking in. What's it like on the camera? See, this, the camera hasn't even seen it yet. See, it still has to peek out. And that's what I was hoping for. I wanted a bit of time where it was time-lapsing. Recording, we won't say time-lapsing, that doesn't sound right. But I wanted a bit of time where it was recording, and then the sun would peek out the corner. Kind of like that there. And because of that, I set the exposure to f16. And I, I'm probably going to regret it because it's um, like the, so many sensors are, are just absolute dust magnets. I had a time lapse recently where I had dust spots in it, just a test one. And I did the spot removal on Lightroom. And you could see this halo from shot to shot. And it had this, this weird like buffering in the center of the shot. And I was just like, what's that? I was like, oh no. Spot removal, so I have to manually do it now, I think. And uh, yeah, I hope not. But uh, wow, that sun is losing power. I probably didn't need the sun, has hit a lot of haze now. 
It looks like a Sahara sunset. The, the sun kind of looks... Don't know if I like that overly much. You just can't tell. We have this Sahara dust this last few weeks where we've got really, really hazy, horrible sunsets. Um, but it is the week of the 26th of March, even though it's, I think it's the 28th now. Um, what are we on? Yeah, we're on the 28th of March now, so we've kind of gone past it, but I always say the, the 26th of March always produces some of the best sunsets you'll ever see. I posted up back on the 26th of March, a photo that I took at Lock Crew Cairns, one of the best sunsets I've ever seen in my life. Phenomenal, the colour lasted for so, so long. Oh, the sun didn't have the power I thought it was gonna, I thought it was just gonna glare out and just be a big mass of star starburst. Could have shot this at F8. <laughs> oh, you just never know. I tell you what, I cannot wait for the other lens for this camera to arrive. So when I bought this ZV-E10 out of Birmingham cameras, I got it with the Samyang 18mm f2.8 and the kit lens. Now the problem with the Samyang lens is that on low light, it has a, a tendency to focus a lot. So you can hear the motors in the microphone. And the biggest problem with it is it doesn't have any stabilization on it. I don't think any Samyang lens has any stabilization. So it meant that you needed to use active steady shot. I'm using only standard here. I don't have the steadiest of hands, but I then uh, contacted Birmingham and they were extremely easy to do it and they were like, yeah, yeah, no problem, bring that lens back and we'll get you we'll get you sorted. Now I'm after getting sorted with them but they didn't have it in stock so they're going to send it out to me and it's the Samyang 12mm F2 autofocus. Autofocus. I had the manual focus for Fuji. It is a fantastic lens. It's for APS-C, it's the go-to astro lens. It's a fantastic lens. Um, don't use it during the day for shooting um, sunsets because the starburst on it is weird. It, only ha it literally only has four lines. Uh, vertical, <laughs> it has a north, south, east and west. So if you want that, if you like that, get the lens. Otherwise, don't touch that lens uh, for that reason. But for astrophotography, it's class. But it's going to be F2. I have a variable ND at home waiting for it as well. So I cannot wait because on this here, I'm shooting, I'm shooting F. I was shooting f7.1 a minute ago, now I'm down to f3.5 because of the light. And you can see now, I have my back, because I just wanted to show the, the sunset, I have my back to this now. This is how, um, this, is how this is how dark it's gotten right now. So the colour is lovely, really, really nice. It's so tranquil here. The sun is just almost, almost past the horizon. There's just, there's just a wee hair above it now. Yeah, I've had, I've shot better here. I have shot far better here, but for the time lapse sake, eh, it could be nice. I might have to return, but it's a 15 minute drive from my house here, so don't really mind too much. Before I lose all the light here, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you got something from it from the two time lapses I've shown you. I'm going to continually show these uh, until I actually get the project finished. So this is going to be a lead up to the final time lapse, which I hope is going to be out around June. It also, it's all going to be obviously weather dependent. Uh, so I hope you like this. I hope you got something from this. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, ring that bell to get notified every time I post up a new video, and find me on all the social medias from Facebook, Instagram, everywhere under. Mark Duffy Photography and until the next time, later Gators. Yeah.